I wonder what stream key I'm sh I'm, I'm sh Okay, <laughs> just hang on a second. This is... Uh, <laughs> Twitch seems to be live. Oh, wait, not yet. Yeah, no, it seems it's... to be live. It's showing me a uh, an ad. It's the right Twitch channel, hope. Yeah, okay, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Things, things seem to be good. <laughs> there we go, I'm getting an ad on YouTube, so yes. Good God. Okay, good, good. Okay, uh, hi, welcome everyone. Hi, I'm the Space Quest Historian. Uh, so sorry for uh, for our lateness. Uh, we had a couple of technical difficulties, and as you can hear, people, uh, namely me, forget which channel we're streaming on. But yes, we are live on the uh, on the right channel. Um, welcome everyone in the text chat. Thank you again for your patience. Uh, today is the Mark Crow Fan Art Competition Art Judging Panel. Although I just refer to it as the art panel because art judging panel makes it sound like, you know, there's a there's a throne and a couple of uh, fire uh, like tiki torches and someone's being brought up in chains and can anyone finish that metaphor for me? No. Um, I thought since I've done a, a live stream, a Space Quest Olympics live stream for uh, for Scott Murphy's benefit two years in a row now, uh, where we donate to his impressive medical bills and and have fun all the while, I thought maybe we should do something similar for Mark Crow's birthday, because they are two guys from Andromeda, so maybe we should celebrate the other one as well. Um, and, and it turns out Mark's birthday is is like smack in the middle of December. Uh, it's, it's a really weird date. Is it? Uh, I think it's the 26th, he said. I, I should I should know this before I start streaming, but but I, I'm really terrible with dates, so I'm very sorry if I got that wrong. But it's like between Christmas and New Year's. I think it's the 26th. Uh, so, which which uh, which fort fortuitously gives us time to, you know, do something spectacular for Mark before I run off to uh, the land of parental misery for uh, <laughs> the next year or or bliss i don't know it could it could go either way but um i think it usually lasts 18 years oh right <laughs> and yeah. it's both somewhat simultaneously <laughs> uh the point of uh, the uh, the point I'm trying to make is uh, I put out this thing that said, "Hey, you guys want to draw some fan art for Mark, and uh, we'll pick a, a winner, and uh, the winner will have his or her artwork printed professionally and framed, and then shipped off to Mark's doorstep for him to do with whatever he pleases, to sort of." To sort of icebreak things, uh, not that not that we, we we need it as a crutch or anything, but I thought just you know for for some levity, I uh, I did some research this this afternoon, which is I, I basically just googled how to critique fine art, and I picked the first article that came up, and it was an article. As you <laughs> It was an article called How to Judge Art, Five Qualities You Can Critique Whether You're an Artist or Not. <laughs> I, I thought we were just going to employ the classic art school method of crit days, which is just everybody bash the piece and make everyone cry, and then whoever's the strongest wins. I think that's one of the five. <laughs> oh, okay then. <laughs> Uh, I've, well, I've... I actually took that website and and I condensed uh, the points that it was making about how to critique art, and I printed it out for me so that I would have a little cheat oh. sheet oh. Uh, during, nice. during the stream. That is clever. I wish I'd done that. I, I just have the article here. <laughs> I was just trying to get my microphone to work. It to you. <laughs> <laughs> you fax it to me. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so uh, I, I put a link in the uh, in the chat. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show it on the stream here because who has time to read uh, on a stream? Uh, but <laughs> it, it lists five criteria: beauty, skill, inherent meaning, uniqueness, and fulfilled intent. I can only assume the latter one implies that you have some sort of bodily reaction to it. Uh, <laughs> Whether it's I mean, perspiration I, or... Sorry? I, I sort of interpret that as you intended to draw a penguin and it looks like a penguin, <laughs> not a monkey. Oh, it's the art... Which oh, is yeah. why you never state your intent before starting. Exactly. To... <laughs> That's exactly. What is the artist trying to say? Yes. That's mm. fulfilled. 
Yes, yes. Oh, uh, no. We, we oh, lost Tom, Tom again. <laughs> <laughs> He's loading. He got stepped <laughs> off syndrome. No, I need that. <laughs> Maybe oh, the... Uh, back. Okay. Lo lovely freeze frame, actually. That's a lovely artist's uh, freeze frame. Um, oh, the, delu the Deluxe Tux makes a good point that none of us are wearing a beret. We need to look suitably... Let me see if I have any props in my drawer here to look suitably judgy and pretentious. Here we go. Oh, I have a mustache yeah. and a goatee. Oh. I think I'm. I think I'm covered. Yeah, yeah I think the, oh. the goatee is fine. Uh, My let's... black turtleneck is in the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's okay. You have glasses. Uh, I have glasses too. That right. I think that qualifies. And um, Tom is bearded. There's not oh, much yeah. to say. Unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, I, so, I've also got this, but I don't think it's uh, stream appropriate. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> the first, I'm, I'm going in alphabetical order. The first piece of art comes from Daryl Heisey, and he has drawn this work mm. of art. It says, a long time ago in a galaxy filled with EGA. And there's a, there's some, well, there's a very Star Wars inspired uh, poster here. And in the bottom, it says, join Roger Wilco, space ace janitor, ace janitor, I went French there for a second, as he endeavors to save the day from the mad scientist Sludge Vohal, his minions, and many others who wish to disrupt the peace of his home planet Xenon. Will Roger, and this is in all capitals, clean up his act? And now back to small characters and save the day. Or will his enemies, capital letters again, mop the floor with him? We're not done yet. Uh, this epic saga is brought to you from the dynamic duo at Derelict Daredevils. What? Der dynamic duo of Derelict Daredevils. Sorry, the type is really small on my screen. The two guys from Andromeda, galactically renowned creators of such classic as Astro Chicken, Monolith Mayhem, and Pug Blaster 3D. Make the most of your buckasoids and experience this adventure today. Oh yes. And as we can see, we've got the uh, the Deltor, we've got the um, uh, uh, Skull Fighters, we've got Ortega, we've got Beatrice and Roger, Roger holding his mop up high, and then we've got the two guys from Andromeda looking on in the background. And I think they're on Corona, because I think I see the rocket bar in the bottom left. And then some Uggo's face, like big blue face in the background. So what do you guys think? Should we like go around the table and like you give your first impressions like we do this in an orderly fashion, or we just dogpile on this thing? I'm orderly, fine with either. Or orderly fashion, hmm. it is. Um, again, I'm just gonna go from top left and down. So, Mr. Slav, Mr. Grund, uh, what, mm -hmm. what, 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 what is, what is the, what is your immediate reaction to this piece of artwork? Uh, well, my immediate reaction is I hear an echo. That's awful. That's not mine. I, <laughs> who's that? I thought it was like in, in, intentional for like uh, effects or something. It's not. Pretty epic. Oh no, I have one too. Yeah, I think it's when you're also sharing your audio. Oh, for fuck's and sake. Well, my initial reaction is I really like the composition of it. I like how it incorporates elements from all the first three, well, actually four space quests, because if I'm not mistaken, that's a little time pod uh, next to the next to the rocket yeah. bar down there, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a nice little, nice little uh, combination of all of the all of the elements of the first four space quests, and actually, well, all five because Beatrice is well, all first five, because uh, yeah. Beatrice is also in her. Anyway, it's a nice little riff on Star Wars with the mop. Um, I like the composition. I like how it, you know, it curves around to focus back down on on Roger, um, and yeah, I love. It. Dang, you roboted out on me just as it was building up to a crescendo there. Damn, you're still roboting. God damn. Because you were really, you were on a roll there. It was good. It was like coming to a, a full fire conclusion right there. And you've frozen on me, sir. 
And then Tom went away. <laughs> this is going great. Uh, as I was saying, I like the composition and how it curves up and comes back down, like the the, the thingy that's on the side. Uh, the spaceships go up to the big one and come down with Volhull down to the mop down. So it's it's like it moves your eye around. Um, I like that. Uh, I, I do have one critique, which yes. is I'm not a huge fan of the... Uh, I, I think there should be maybe be I, I can talk uh, <laughs> like me I yes I feel like there should be maybe a gradual more gradient between the uh, the light purple and the dark purple of the sky because right now it clashes a bit but aside from that I think it's a very nice piece I also like the I really like the the way that uh, you know the the way that the, the starship are the starships and the planets are aligned it really helps uh, guide the eye toward the like the central composition. Now, I'm not really, I don't really remember what the original poster of the of the uh, that that this piece is riffing on. I don't recall exactly how much similarity. I mean, I, I'm I'm not sure if this is exactly like if it copies like if it uh, if it replicates the elements exactly as they were. But I like that. I really like the. Uh, the way the comp the yeah the composition uh, somehow circles towards the two uh the two main characters there i really like the the the, the woman's pose mm -hmm. and uh yeah um cro like from a from a color perspective uh maybe the 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 big blue guy in in the background um i feel like I feel like a little bit more uh like if 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 it if he borrowed a little bit of the um overall uh overall scene color like if he were just a little bit more purple I feel like it's clashing just a little bit like he's a bit he's a bit cold compared to mm -hmm. to uh everything else that is going on uh but I like it my one my one uh the, the one thing that irks me here is that somehow because of the way that the composition is structured somehow my uh my eye is drawn to that point between the big gray starship and the guy's head maybe that's just me being weird but that's where i feel like my <laughs> my my eye is being drawn to uh like the, but uh, other than that the, 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 the space between the uh, small spaceships and like the uh, yeah. the, the ear of volhall and the, no, uh yeah the, the the space between the 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 big the big head and the yeah. big gray starship yeah but and but and i but i guess it's a good thing because i am expecting them to clash every second now so i guess it's it has it it does well in the in the narrative department cool. so yeah good piece good piece i i i think it really plays on the on the original star wars at least from memory anyway of what they're going for in this um the reference is great um even up to the two guys from andromeda standing in the background replacing r2d2 and c3po <laughs> i believe were, were the original people there yeah um with the a monolith burger meal and everything <laughs> yeah yeah it's got a soda um, and scott has a chicken wing i think yeah i can't tell on uh, on my screen is beatrice holding anything in her hand yeah, she's got like a purple magazine. I think maybe it's a space. I'm gonna zoom in here. You guys can't see that, but uh, I think it's. Oh, it's the uh, it's the Space Quest Four hint book from uh, from Space Quest Four. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, if you zoom in all the way, it says Space Quest Four hint book. It even has the original cover on it. I should have paid attention to that, but um, no, I, 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 that's the first I've noticed. I think Leia in the original had a blaster or something like that, but yeah. um, a hint book think... is more useful. The, the only thing that's throwing me off a little bit about this, and this is a really stupid complaint, but I think it's mostly Roger's face that's throwing me off a little bit. Yeah. Um, maybe his expression. I don't know. Um, I think that's the only thing, and that for whatever reason, that's where my eye is drawn to. Um, <laughs> he kind of looks I, like I he just why. pissed his pants and is hoping no one will notice. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. He has a look of surprise. Uh, not, not that, that you know, that's totally like Roger, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, but I, overall, though, I do love this this composition a lot. Uh, it's it's, I think it's very nice. Cool. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your insight. Ah, uh, Josh Mandel. Uh, so what what do you? Yeah, think? I, 
I don't have a lot to add. Uh, I, I love the composition. I love the, the whole cinematic feel of it. I think it succeeds really, really well on that level. Um, as, far as, as far as nitpicks go, uh, I really don't have any. I guess if I, if I were to pick out one thing and say I'd like a little something here is if there was a little bit more in the lower left mm. um, above the horizon, yeah. but below the, um, the streaking ships. Uh, mm. It just, it feels like it's maybe a little bit of dead space there that could have been filled with something, uh, something interesting, but, mm. but on the whole, uh, I really mm. like it. I think it's an excellent take on, um, on Star Wars and it does a really good job of encompassing a lot of the uh, plot elements that were common to the uh, to the whole series. Yeah. Uh let's see uh from the uh from the empty easel um article uh on the on the five qualities uh would you say that there is beauty in this piece? Does it does it fulfill the criteria of beauty? I think so. Yeah? Because yes. part of part of beauty according to the article is the movement or flow to guide viewers through the art. Yes. And I think this really has it. That's true. Yes. There are there are in fact seven criteria sub criteria in this one. Uh repeating shapes and patterns and symmetry, colors that complement each other, textures crops and compositions that focus the eye and keep the viewer's attention and the fifth one movement and flow to guide viewers through the art which it excels at i i agree also correct and appealing proportions of figures and objects they look like they look like who they're supposed to look like and of course presentation and framing so um um others uh who's uh, uh skill skill and technique uh does it uh, does it fulfill the criteria for skill and technique I think so. I, it's well rendered and uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's drawn well. Yeah. Yep. Then the proportions are really good. And that's very important. And the yeah. character? And the, yeah, the human proportions, yeah. The characters are, are really faithful to their in game counterparts, uh, although they're in poses that we've never seen before. So, yeah. You did a really good job with that. Yes. Absolutely agree. Uh, inherent meaning is it? Uh, oh, there are five levels of meaning in art. Is it purely representational? Is it art that references other art? I would say it definitely qualifies in that one. Is it art that tells a story or evokes a specific emotion? Is it art that makes a statement, a powerful statement of some kind? Or is it art that is an allegory or metaphor? I think it's a metaphor for um, Quest for Glory. Yes. Well, it, it simply has to be. It's it. Um, yeah. and, and on the topic of uniqueness, well, we've, it's the first one we've seen so far, but uh, does it, uh, be, being, a, being a sort of, uh, I'm gonna put this in like air quotes, uh, a parody poster of the original Star Wars poster, I suppose it's not terribly unique in that sense, but as parodies go, it's, it's a really, really good one. Yeah, I mean it's a reinterpretation, and it's I think it succeeds at, at what it at what it tries to do. So I would say so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I think overall. Spaceness. Sorry. So, oh, uh, Tom, what was that? Oh, uh, I think it's unique to Space Quest. Absolutely. I oh mean, yeah. We haven't seen we haven't seen this composition in Space Quest before. So. No. Space Quest has never Sorry, parodied uh, Star Wars ever. <laughs> well, I was I was going to add that I think. <laughs> It definitely uh, captures the spirit of Space Quest because Space Quest being a parody of sci-fi and Star Wars, that it's only fitting that the poster should be a parody as well. So hmm. that's a good point. That's a really good point. And and finally, fulfilled intent. Uh, if can you can you sort of decipher what the artist was trying to say with this piece, and do you think that they have uh, fulfilled that intent? I think they were trying to say, I like Space Quest, and clearly they fulfilled their <laughs> intent. <laughs> Agreed. Yep. Maybe, you want to maybe dig a little deeper? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I could, but 
But then that would make trolls cry. So, no. You know. oh. oh, we don't want that. Uh, we've already I've, we've already had enough faux pas on the stream so far. Trolls, can you move? Can you move the can you move the picture again, real quick? Just like you did before, because the stars were making this really cool. Or there was this really cool oh, effect on the that. stars? Ooh. Yeah. Look Ooh, that. okay. So that's <laughs> that's extra points for it. Animated. Yeah, that's VFX wow. added to it. Ah, uh, that's that's just nice. <laughs> that's just me who squashed the picture down for for the stream. <laughs> um, right here we go. This is Marco the monster from Andromeda. Let me see if I can move it over. Just give it a good old scooch so it doesn't get in the way of everyone's favorite art panel. Right, so while I'm busy fucking around with my OBS Oh, wait, here, wrong way. Wrong way. This way. Are you? Here we go. Here we go. The monster from Andromeda. Uh, so let's, uh, let's change up the order a bit. Uh, uh, Josh, would you like to go first this time? Sure. Um, I, uh, one thing that I like about it... Um, well, there's a couple things I like about it. For one, I like the font. Um, <laughs> yes. It's it's sort of tales from the crypt ish, um, uh, I so that kind of goes along with the whole monster theme. I don't know if it quite goes along with the space quest theme, um, <laughs> and it's it's also sort of a almost a backhanded slap to Mark. I mean, calling him a monster is is a little unusual. Maybe I'm just the only one that feels that way. Um, I don't know. Maybe so. it's maybe it's like he's a, he's like a monster at graphics. Like he's like like the uh, like gigantic, like huge, like gargantuan. Well, this is how we we bring our own interpretation to the artwork, which maybe. is what we're supposed to do. Um, and and I think uh, oh, Al, uh, I think there's um, I'm not sure, but I think there's a little dead space. Yeah. Mm. You could have a point there, yes. Um, what do you think of the uh, rendition of the monster Andromedan himself? Oh, I like it. I like it. Um, it it's fun. It doesn't harken back to anything in Space Quest that I can think of. Uh, and it doesn't really look like Mark. But... Um, <laughs> But I like it. I mean, it's he, he's he's a friendly, funny little character. I like it. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Tom, what do you what do you think? Um, I agree with uh, everything Josh said. I really like the creep show font. Um, <laughs> I like the uh, the lens flare. It looks like a, there's like a little bit of a flare behind the uh, text. Yeah. Um, uh, so I like that. That all looks very nice. I like the colors. Um, Purple is one of my favorite colors, so um, I like that. There's, there's just a lot of dead space, and that that does bother me as well as like it looks like the Mark Crow has like a stroke around it, whereas the text below it does not. So does that's, not. That's what we a little bit. Agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I like the character. It's pretty cool. I don't know what it's. I, I don't know. Maybe there's a reference that I'm not quite getting. Um, but it's nicely drawn. Um, it's nicely drawn. Yeah. I'm a big fan of cartoony stuff, and this clean, no. you know, uh, no, yeah, I know, it may come as a big surprise. This this really clean black outline uh, look of it, uh, yeah, it uh, it speaks to me. Now, I would have complained about the the dead space, just as the gentleman before did, but at the same time, I was thinking, uh, I guess art is supposed to. Uh, not just answer questions, but leave you with some questions. Mm. And in this case... Did you just say I your think, own name? Yeah, I did. I always <laughs> slip that in. <laughs> supposed to leave no, but it, you with questions <laughs> about boars, mainly. Exactly. <laughs> no, but in, in this case, it's really it really gives it an... I hope it was an intentional... I hope it was intentional, like an air of mystery. You know, like there's something that's supposed to be there right under that lens flare. And mm. it's not there. So I, have a joke I am about intrigued. that as well. I'm not gonna. No, I've already said penis <laughs> once. <laughs> Dinosaur <laughs> penis, even twice, twice now. Right. Sorry. Yeah. We're in the presence of greatness. Let's not do that many dick jokes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so I like it. I the the thing the thing that I that I dig most about this piece is yeah the 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 mystery the implied meaning behind it. If there is one, and I assume Ooh. there is one. Nice, I like that. Uh, Francisco, what do you think? Um, I like the I like the rendering of the monster. I like how it still manages to, despite being a monster, it still keeps the the elements of mark's uh two guys persona obviously the pig snout and the and the goggles and the mohawk mm. um and yeah i i pretty much agree on all the same points i i uh i i am not a huge fan of the negative space the dead space uh i feel maybe it could benefit from like knowing what he's looking at or why he's smiling but again that is the mystery of the piece mm. um so yeah it's Overall, I, I, I find it amusing. Um, and yeah, I like the I also like the font. Uh, another suggestion would, well, I, I may perhaps, uh, I don't know, change up the color of one of the two because having it all yellow, it just kind of, it doesn't really pop so much. Like maybe have the Mark Crow, the monster from Andromeda subtitle will be a different color. But overall, as I said, it's a mm. nice piece. Yeah. next piece of art comes from uh, Nate Kitchens. Nate Kitchens drew this, and I'm going to try <clears throat> my best to move this into a place that everyone can enjoy, which is on top of my face cam. There you go. Now this one. Oh, Nate Kitchens. What a, what a delightful piece he has produced. Uh, let's see if we can mess the order up somewhat here. Uh... Let's uh, let's hear from Mr. King because there's a lot of uh, stuff going on in the chat that we have two kings with us. We have King Graham and then we have Tom King. So uh, let's do the first king. A clash of kings. A clash of kings. Um, well, um, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm rarely speechless. Um, I'm really speechless. Um, is that a giant chicken head? <laughs> there, I, I know there's asterisks everywhere. I'm just trying to make sense of this. Um, I think I like it. <laughs> I agree. Uh, it's a lot to take in, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, I'm still trying to make sense of it, but I think I like it. Uh, I very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> There's a, um, there is a giant chicken in the foreground, uh, and then a bunch of l uh, little other astro chickens, and then Roger is either screaming no or on. <laughs> <laughs> and do, does the chicken have hair? Is it? Is it oh, it's supposed yeah, to be it's, it's like an Elvis do. It's, yeah. I, think it's a, I think it's a mohawk. Yeah, astro chicken didn't have a mohawk, did he? He had something on his head, didn't he? Like this, maybe it was a mohawk. I'm not sure. So maybe, maybe, maybe the artist is. I think it was his um his comb. Yeah. It, but it it could be confused with a, an Andromedan mohawk. It that never occurred to me before. Huh. What is, is what is on the ship? I'm trying to read what is on or the thing the structure behind Roger that's red. Um, it's like. Closed? It says closed, I think. Yeah, closed. Okay. I think it's supposed to be the rocket bar. Yeah, the rocket bar. It but looks like a plunger to me. Am I? Am I the only one seeing this? No, it does look like a plunger because it's got the, the oh. Oh. handle coming out. The oh, it is. A, oh, it is. Yeah, because it there's a high rise in the background as well, and I was, I was wondering what that was doing on Corona. Also, well, this is really the like is unfolding. The sand is pink, which it's not on Corona. That's on Flea It's either that or a really brown uh, tractor beam. But I think it's a plunger. Oh, could be a plunger. Could be. When, whenever we do the Space Quest Olympics, people always ask, hey, why don't you have any from Space Quest 6? And they go, there are no arcade sequences in Space Quest 6. What are you going to do? Make people solve the data quarter on time? What, <laughs> that's, that's right. Not, right. Um, I should stop. Or actually so dodge the kidney stone in real time. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, en enough harping on Space Quest 6. What do you think of the art piece that has been presented to us? 
Me? Yes, you. Oh, it upsets me. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> good, good. I, 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 I don't really understand it. <laughs> a lot I don't understand about it, which which frustrates me and makes me feel lesser. Um, I'm I'm deeply disturbed by the black <laughs> thing over the Roger Wilco with Mark's name scrawled on it. I mean, it just seems like it was it was designed to um, provoke, and on that. Count it does actually very very well. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah. I've yeah. Uh, uh, Grundislav, what what is your take on this? Well, I've I've been waiting uh, to to pull out two um, tricks, which I always like to do when I when I critique art. One is to use a word, which I will not use in this for this piece. Hopefully, I can use it from the others. The other is to. Uh, <laughs> bring up another artist that it makes me think of um and the just the 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 colors and the sort of just sort of minimalist uh uh aesthetic to it it's sort of like um sort of like david hockney but a little bit more um less pools more chickens um <laughs> I like the uh, I like the the sort of like triangular nature of the chickens and the <laughs> the, the sort of like uh, construction paper collage aesthetic that it's going for. Uh, again, I'm not quite sure what's happening either. <laughs> I, I I guess Roger's upset that something's closed, and the chickens are also the Astro chickens are upset by it. Um, Apologies for the loud noise of my heater while I continue this. I love your um, heater. It's soothing. It's soothing. It okay. is. Well. ASMR Grundy. <laughs> my, my two critiques of the piece are I'm not a huge fan of the sort of uh, haphazard slapping of Mark Crow over the Roger Wilco um, uh, logo. Not, yeah. not because necessarily because it's uh, just sort of over it. But also because it just it hits the the red of the it just it just makes a tangent. Yeah, the it tangent. The red. I, I knew that would bother you. <laughs> yeah, and, and then there's another tangent, which is the last O of no, which just rings around that moon or sun or whatever oh, it's supposed yeah. to be. I'm just uh, it it irks me. But aside from that, <laughs> there's definitely some creativity here because i <laughs> I'm sure this piece tells a story. I would love to know what that story is. Yes, I, I I have to interject here. I, I I also really would love to hear what went through uh, this this artist's head when when he drew oh, this. Nature. Pickle Dog just noticed that that uh, Roger is also holding a plunger, which is hard to see, but I think that's actually the case. He is. Well, so he's there's a, also there are layers Lucy to the story. Lucy Phonics suggests that Roger is saying no because Mark Crow is the star of the game. He's been replaced as... Oh, that makes sense. Oh, wait. I think maybe it's because the Astro... Maybe Mark Maybe uh, Mark Crow invented the Astro Chicken, and now he's been he's been ousted from the game. So now it's all Mark Crow and chickens. I don't know. Uh, also, oh, oh, wait. Um, uh, Vocabra in the chat says the style was somewhat rem rem reminiscent of Another World, the Delphine games. And... Uh, this this angular art style also kind of reminds me of that you know that little sequence in Sam and Max Hit the Road where you go into virtual reality and everything's oh, yeah, just triangles. That's <laughs> yes, that's what it was reminding me of. Right. Uh, Liv, Liv, what what are what are yes. your thoughts on this? Well, I think uh, hmm, I think we should uh, we should look at this from from two separate angles. Like, look at the at the at the drawing. I mean, at the painting in and of itself. Uh, you know, separated from the from the framing, because if you if you just ignore everything that's going on around it, uh, it's actually pretty it's actually pretty nice. I'm a big fan. I'm also a big fan of uh, of simplified of the simplified angular uh, look of the characters, and I think the composition actually works. My one problem here is that if you were to desaturate everything in this uh, in this image. Mm -hmm. uh, Sadly, like the values would just uh, would just sort of blend into each other. 
So I think what it would could really do with would would be some value uh, contrast. Like for example, everything that's in the foreground, like that chicken uh, and the green thing on the right, whatever it is. Yeah, if it were just slightly dark darkened, it would just make so much more sense. I'm wondering about the green stuff on either side of it. Is that like chicken scaffolding or is it just like <laughs> bits of like cutout paper that got lost somewhere? What is that? Can I ask you what chicken scaffolding is? <laughs> yeah, I've never heard that phrase before. The, the, on the left, it looks like the, it looks like one of the astro chickens is climbing up this bit of scaffolding. I don't know what he's doing up there. Uh, next up, the second to last one is oh god, I hope I don't butcher this. Uh, it's it it sounds it sounds vaguely Greek. Some someone correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, Nikos Evagelou could be French. I don't know. I'm very sorry. <laughs> uh, anyway, Nikos drew this uh, lovely landscape portrait of mm -hmm. Roger sweeping the floor in, in Monolith Burger. I'm just going to put it down here, or it will cover all of my ugliness. Um, so, okay, what's the order? I think Liv goes first this time. I'm sorry. I just like how, you, how your head pops up behind from behind it. It's really funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> I th this is one of my favorites so far. Uh, again, not only because it, it is cartoony, but something that's very, very important with art in general uh, is that you should be able to understand it. Uh, you know, in uh, oh god, I'm tired. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm starting again. Like it should all make sense uh, from the first moment that you see it. You know, like it should have that. It should have a strong impact. On you, it should be very clear uh, initially, uh, you know, mm, yeah, ab about what it what its intent is, and then draw you in to start looking at, at details. So you should start with the bigger picture and then move on to the details. And this is very like the, the composition is very bold. It's central. It feels like the monolith burger is is just uh, jumping out at you. Uh, mm. The black uh, void of space behind really helps uh, make the the colors. Uh, pop up, pop out. Sorry, yep. and I really like the uh, the cartoony slash MS Paint uh, aesthetic. It's very clean. <laughs> it's very readable. It does exactly what it's uh, supposed to uh, to be doing. So yeah, this is one of my favorites so far. I really like it. Nice, nice. Thank you, uh, Mr. King. What is your take? Like Liv said, I like the um, the contrast between the monolith burger and the background. It really helps stand out from everything. Um, good representation of monolith burger. It's one of my favorite uh, screens um, of the series. So. Oh yeah, iconic, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, did a great job. Um, it's very representative of the location. Yeah. No ships docked, everything's just empty, and it's just Roger and his mom doing what seems like a merry little jig. With his I mom. like the loneliness of it, right? Yeah. And lonely, loneliness is a big part of the Space Quest experience. Correct me if I'm right. wrong, of course, everyone who loves Space Quest 5, but uh, at least in Space Quest 1, 2, and 3, uh, Roger was all on his own, and everyone was out to kill him. 4, 2, actually, now that I think about it. And, and most of 6. Too, yeah. Uh, At least we had a friend in six, though. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Josh, what, what do you what do you think of this depiction of Monolith I, Burger? I, I like it a lot. Um, for one thing, there is the the fact that Monolith Burger is is the iconic location. That's the word that I was searching for that you used. That is that is the appropriate word. Um, but there is also something about it uh, that appealed to me because it's reminiscent of the famous painting of the diner at night. With hardly, I forget what it's called, the night Nighthawks. something. Nighthawks by Nighthawks. Edward Hopper. I was Ed thinking Hopper. the exact yes. same thing. Good God, yeah. you're right. I didn't think of that. <laughs> but the, yeah. the second yeah. you said that, it just popped into my head. You're right. So. Um, I think there's a lot to like about it. I mean, I like the coloring. I like the style. Uh, I like the contrast. Um, I, I like the choice of subject and the um, uh, 
uh, and what it appears to me to be saying. So this gets oh. a thumbs up. Oh, do you have like a particular interpretation? Because I was, I was actually wondering, why is Roger mopping in Monolith Burger? He was never employed there, was he? Is, is this an alternate timeline where he got stuck or something? Hmm. I, I just, there's, well, he worked there. So <laughs> you could say in the larger scheme of things, he did work at Monolith Burger. Um, but uh, more than that, I think it, it is sort of a metaphor for Roger because he is a horribly lonely person. Yes. Mm. He really is. So um, it's very evocative of, of that loneliness. And, and the fact that he's alone on this place that is suspended out in the middle of nothing with nothing around him at all, just adds to the to the sense of isolation. Man, that's sad. That is, mm. but beautiful at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> mm. Mm. Good God. Uh, that, that, oh, that hit me in the feels, dude. Uh, I mean, shit. I'm answering the provocative <laughs> feeling on this. <laughs> uh, Francisco, can you somehow top that? No, oh, I no, can't. I mean, I mean, what's what's your what's your take on it? Sorry, sorry, I'm a terrible. Josh I'm terrible. pretty much uh, hit the nail on the head. I was I was thinking like my immediate uh, reaction was that it it definitely reminded me of of Nighthawks, and it it also you know evoked that sense of of loneliness and isolation where you have Rogers just doing his his job, what he's known for, in an empty monolith burger in the void of space. Hmm. Um, the other thing, the the other initial reaction I had, and I don't mean this as an insult or of any kind but i feel like this is what this piece of art you would make a great t-shirt like it would be oh, it's yeah. what i would expect like a fan made uh or a fan space quest t-shirt imagery to have because it's kind of like it kind of just playing on that idea of like night hawks seen through the lens of space quest um Sort of an obscure reference, but I feel like it's it's obscure enough for like a real Space Quest fan to to appreciate it. Um, but no, I I really like this piece a lot. Like it's it's it definitely it's it's um, I, I don't want to say simplistic because that sounds like a negative. But I mean, as far as like the style goes, it's it's flat. There's like not a lot of shading, not super a lot of detail, but I think that despite that, it's definitely the one that we've seen so far that has got the most just like emotional weight to it. Mm. Um, yeah, it so does. yeah. So it's sort of like That's Grandma my... Moses does Space Quest. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, and and it does. It has some really really stark bold lines. Like it almost almost like the artist like picked a pen that was a bit too thick and then decided to just go ahead and draw it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, minimalistic. Pickle Dog says minimalistic is far better than simplistic. <clears throat> yes, yeah. minimalistic is the word I was looking for. And one thing I really like about this uh, is the border. For some reason, mm. I really enjoyed the border with his little signature in the bottom right corner and that very stylized yep. N dot. Also, Yep. Very minimalist, but yeah. it makes it look almost like uh, a panel from uh, an unfinished or un, you know, uh, undiscovered Space Quest comic somewhere. Well, I will present you now with the final piece of art from Nina Schanefeld. And it looks like this. Mm. I will now move it out of your oh. faces. Oh, nice. I am trying There's to move it. There's a lot going on in this. Mm. Yeah, this is not uh, minimalist. There's... Um, <laughs> Uh, there's 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 some some real attention to detail going on in this. Let's see if we can name all the references. We've of course top left we've got uh, Monolith Burger, uh, and we've got the salesman from Volhall Strikes Back. No, that's not it. Volhall's Revenge. Sorry, one of those. Uh, Space Quest Two. We've got the man himself, Sludge Volhall, now sporting a very CGI CGA uh, stylish uh, cyan ish skin tone. Uh, bottom left, we've got some Skull Fighters, got Fester Blatz, we've got Roger Jr. from Space Quest IV. There's that little weird ship, uh, like, right at the bottom, the, the uh, purple ship was the ship on the box cover for Space Quest I. That's not really in any of the games, it's just on the box cover for no particular reason. Now, that's an interesting little reference. 
Uh, of course, we got Roger in the middle, brandishing his golden mop. We've got Beatrice with a blaster. I don't remember her having one of those, but that's that's neither here nor there. The Galaxy Galleria, of course, with the infamous Skatorama. The Aluminum Mallard and the SCS Eureka with its little... Um, uh, uh, vacuum cleaner-ish nose in the front. Uh, there's a little scene from the uh, uh, desert on Corona, the Ulan's Flats settlement. Uh, there's a little Pinkins dude in the bottom right corner. I always wondered what those guys would look like up close, and they just apparently look like they just look like babies with huge eyebrows. Apparently, cool. And then we've got the two guys from Andromeda wondering where they went wrong in life. Uh, standing in the background looking sort of forlorn. I don't know. Uh, but I'm not, get, I'm not here to put words into people's uh, mouths. I think we're going we're gonna to go the... Uh, we've kind of come full circle now. So let's go back to the original order of things and uh, hear from Mr. Gonzalez first, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, so I think it's interesting that we're bookending this with the two sort of... Uh, sci-fi movie inspired posters because the first one was obviously definitely referencing star wars this one i don't think is necessarily referencing star wars but it's definitely got a sort of you know star wars-esque mm -hmm. uh just like sci-fi uh movie poster composition to it yeah um it i like it it's a it's a little busy um, but it definitely has, you know, all the representations, all the representational elements of, of most of the games. Um, and I, yeah, I, I like the, uh, I, I like the sort of, um, dual blaster, uh, oh, yeah. sort of outward, uh, flow because like you know roger is obviously the center your eye is drawn immediately to roger although fester blatz could probably be a little less uh bright blue because he's a bit uh a bit cga compared like if <laughs> maybe he was toned down a little bit more like vohal but generally roger is like the focus point of the piece i just and noticed so wait a minute i just noticed that arnoid is actually just below fester but sort of melts into him they're sort of the same color you're right i thought that was fester's body i didn't realize that was that was arnoid so yeah weird uh, okay well anyway <laughs> so but there's this speaking of like lines and and shapes and stuff like compositionally there's this kind of interesting line that if you start from the left and you follow the pink blaster in through roger jr's arms to roger's hand and then it kind of goes sideways up the mop handle to then beatrice's oh. arm to then the other there's this sort of like yeah. this shape happening oh. across the poster which is cool yeah. yeah um i like that uh and that actually like divides it into the top and the bottom half which is cool because you've got like the bottom is definitely a lot busier than the top but um but yeah like it's it's cool composition the the um the rendering is is nice um i like roger's sort of sort of like Yeek, i'm trying to be a hero but i'm also <laughs> kind of unsure of myself look while beatrice in the background is just kind of like yeah i'm a badass yeah um, roger's got that kind of sly grin to him like i'm yeah. not really sure what i'm doing here but have at you also he's like totally trying to be an action hero but they've kind of drawn him a little pudgy looking which is kind of fun <laughs> uh, <laughs> he does take a lot of so naps yeah he does um so yeah i, I like it Cool. Um, Liv, what do you what do you think of this? Yeah, I really agree with 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 what uh, Francisco was saying about the the dynamic of the composition. I also like the fact that it's not uh, like the 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 main axis of the composition is a little bit crooked, which gives it a lot of uh, uh, it makes it makes everything seem much more uh, dynamic. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's it's not uh, divided into uh, symmetrical perfectly vertical side, uh, halves mm -hmm. it, it gives it 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 really it really gives it a lot of uh, of, of dynamic um, um the one thing that i would like here uh that i would have would have liked to see more uh with all the that there's there's very intense um colored lighting which i'm a big fan of uh and i really would have liked to see it more uh, you know reflected on the on the on the characters uh, themselves because uh, it, it feels like they're being lit by some unseen very very white very cold light mm. which uh, doesn't seem to be anywhere in the in the frame 
and those very very intense blaster i thought it, i thought they were uh, lightsabers first but the, uh, i guess they're blasters um we don't have lightsabers oh, in space quest <laughs> <laughs> as far as i know anyway yeah i really would have liked uh, i really would have liked them to to you know to affect the the characters a bit more and i personally since they were also going for i think it's still a star wars reference uh, the poster that is, I'm not sure, but I would have made the the one of the blasters uh, bluish, uh, and did that uh, you know that classic uh, characters are are lit uh, mm. in one color from one side and another color from the other side that that just gives it that whole duality sort of aspect. But that's just uh, putting a very fine point on it. Other than that, yeah, very skillful, uh, very skillful rendering. Uh, Good composition, a little bit busy, but yeah, uh, nicely done. Yeah, yeah I mean, to, to, with, the, with the composition, it's almost like everything is very busy in the center of it. And then there's actually a, a, a bit of space, like in the in the top right corner behind Volhall. And then in the bottom right corner, there's like really nothing at all. What, what do you think about that? I would have personally placed uh, the title uh, straight smack in the middle, uh, like aligned to the bottom and to the center i feel like it's a little bit i mean it, it's it's nice that it's uh it's nice that it's not a perfectly symmetrical composition you know but it could have it, it would have helped balance things just a little bit i mean that's just my okay that's just my one of my nitpicks sure. other than that yeah very skillful i like it oh wait swivel guys in the in the chat says space quest 5 had lightsabers at least they did all that, right there we go that little easter egg where you see obi-wan kenobi and darth vader in the star Khan academy forgot about that thank you <laughs> yeah but i think this piece really really uh showcases the importance of compositional lines and how, just how pleasant they make everything when used right and this is one of, this is a good example of that hmm. it's very pleasant and I, I guess that's why we were all we all went wow when we first saw it because it's the first thing that you uh, perceive you know uh, basically it's just color and composition in yeah. this case and Daryl so, Heising Daryl Heising the chat says it's definitely a reference to the movie poster for Star Wars Empire Strikes Back uh, there Tom, we go Tom what do you think of this uh, I, actually um, I was kind of fiddling with my phone because I was trying to remember which Star Wars it was from um, ah. because there are a couple of posters right and I was trying to remember what Vader was holding in his hand in that poster um so i pulled up um the poster right i don't know if you guys can see this the one that's based off of oh um, yeah the street definitely I, can't but we'll we'll you guys can google it afterwards yeah. <laughs> oh, okay i'm sorry yeah um, no 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 thank you i i love the use of the salesman uh, in replace of the lightsaber mm. um i i love that 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 was a lightsaber in the original poster. Oh, so they're just oh, like uh, floating out from his hand, kind of. Yeah, yeah, like he hold, holds the power of Selzman, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the reference go. to Space Quest Two. Yeah. Um, the um, when you were talking about that ship that doesn't really appear in any of the games, but appears on one of the back of the boxes. This is a question for you. I'm not sure of this, but um, does Mark have like a, quite a large collection of tin ships, like? <laughs> Ten metal ships. I don't know. I think that might be a question for Josh. Actually, you did I, say he had toy robots, but yeah, he had robots. I don't know about ships. I really don't. I didn't know if it was based off of something like that. Um, what the reason for that was, but um, anyway, sorry. Back to the picture. Um, <laughs> God, I, there's a lot going on here. It's awesome. Um, this must have taken a long time. Um, yeah, it's basically like how many Space Force references can we cram into a single poster like picture? No kidding. Uh, Wow, yeah, really a lot of props for like the time and effort spent on this. This really took a lot of planning out and moving around, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that, and this is like, this isn't any fault of the artist, um, because this is just a reference to, um, to the original poster, but the scene, the only thing I don't really like about it, um, aside from, uh, I, do, I do agree that the, the logo being in the, to the sides a little, you know, off, I think it would be better in the center. I, I definitely agree with that. Um, but the thing that stands out to me and tracks my eye the most is the brightness of the scene in the back, the above the little purple baby thing. Mm. Um, oh, Corona. It really yeah. stands out a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, it really stands out a lot. Um, but it's like that in the original poster too. So 
Mm. Uh, it's just, I think it's just because it's so bright, you know, compared to the background and everything around it. But other than that, good lord, this is really well done. Mm. Yeah, I, no- I noticed that with the bright uh, Corona scene as well, and I, I, it almost looks like it's a thought bubble coming out of the little pinkins. He's just going, <laughs> I wish I was on Corona. I fucking hate jungles. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Josh, Josh, what do you think of this? Well, I, I have to preface this by saying um, I, I, I don't want to recuse myself, but I do know Nina. Um, oh, so do she I. And I have, she and oh, I. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, we've corresponded a couple of times. Um, I love this one. Uh, I love the, uh, the fact that it suggests action, Mm -hmm. uh, in a way that none of the other posters that, uh, that I recall gave a a sense of movement and action. I love the selection of, um, iconic images. Uh, I, I love the fact that it is a, uh, again, like the first one is a parody of star Wars, which is true to space quests um reason for being um, <laughs> yes i i my my favorite element of it really is vohal's hand yeah um mm-hmm. there's just something so cool about that yeah and his facial expression is also re- like grim determination like he really is the mad scientist that he was presented as in in space quest 2 like just gone yeah. mad with power it's yeah. just such a powerful yeah. pose, you know, like, mm. yeah, whereas the poster is just like that, like his, his, he has a fist with a lightsaber coming out of it. This is actually much more powerful. I think just the position of his hand. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So, so, I, so I really love it. So on, on, on a scale of, you mentioned the action packedness of this poster, would you say on, on a scale of action packed, uh, the, uh, Astro chicken one with the chicken scaffolding or this one? In terms of you just you just wanted to say chicken scaffolding. <laughs> Establishing God help the me, I do, I do. <laughs> I think this one has the edge. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so let's um, let's see how how we how how are we gonna pick this? I suppose we'd have to do some sort of ranking, at least like a, a top three. Uh, so I'm gonna try and bring all of them on screen right now. The three bits of art that we seem to enjoy the most let's see if we can get them on screen yeah that that'll do that'll do so i really should have thought of this a bit more but uh the way we're gonna pick this um oh let's see i I think what makes sorry i think what makes most sense is for each to pick a favorite right yeah i was was, yeah i was thinking of that as well um let's let's see if we can pick a favorite and let's see if a consensus comes out of that and if not it's time to roll some dice or something uh or just make or just see if we can somehow uh, produce some form of battle royale thing where we change each other's minds and we could (laughs) ask mark we how He's not here. I don't. I don't know. But but <laughs> somehow I feel like if there's another person whose opinion should count, it would be Mark. That's um, a good point. Yeah. Uh, one thing we could do is, but but I kind of want. The we could also to, ask Chat too. We could also ask. Oh yeah. Now here we go. Because I kind of want to get out of this uh, stream with like a clear winner. And then, of course, we could present the three finalists to Mark, and he could just say, screw the stream, I want this one. And, of course, that's the one he's going to get. But then again, that would kind of ruin the surprise, wouldn't it? It's a birthday present. And he's not okay. watching the stream, so... Good point. Okay. I take it back. No, I... Dude, I love you so much. And the dead air is fantastic. Uh, so Pickle Dog right. makes a very good point. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, they, we should probably name these. Like, just yes. maybe number them or something. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, so maybe I should put them in order then. Because Nina's was... Just to put them in alphabetical order. So we've got uh, number one. That's the, uh, space, uh, the uh, uh, Star Wars one. Or sorry, four parody. Anyway, that's that's D- uh, Daryl's piece, the first one we saw. That's number one. Number two is the Lonely Monolith Burger, and number three is Nina's Every Reference Under the Sun poster. Is that cool with you? Yeah. So, so I guess what we do is we go around the table, and you guys just say a number. Is that how we do? We do that. Uh, Francisco, do you have a number for me? 
I have a question first. <laughs> oh good. Oh good. But yeah. actually, go around the t leave me for last because my heater should be turning off soon, and I okay. have the question. <laughs> All right, we'll do it. We'll do it in in, in reverse order then. Um, Josh, do you have a number? Okay, so there, there. Um, uh, Daryl's is one. Yeah. Um, uh, Monolith Burger is two. Yes. And Nina's is three. Yes. I'm voting with three. Cool. Thank you, uh, Tom. Which number do you like? Man, um... I think it's even better uh, if you don't give a reason, just the number. I'm going with three. Three? Right. Uh, Liv? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's tough for me. For me, it's between two and three. Uh, my personal favorite would be two, but I think three, if, if, this, is, if this is supposed to be a, a poster that's printed... Uh, I think it, it just has all the qualities. So even though my personal preference would be two, I think three would be the way to go. So right. it's three for me. So it's a three. That, uh, Alexander says, uh, put the text on screen, like one, two, and three. That takes for fucking ever in OBS. So I'm <laughs> sorry. Oh, yeah. Just from, from top... Can't confirm. Yeah, top left, one, top right, two, bottom, three. Uh, so that's actually three votes for three. Uh, Francisco? So my vote's basically meaningless now. Um, <laughs> kind of? But, well, no, but but so I'm with Liv on this one. Uh, for me, it was also between two and three, but mm -hmm. my question was mostly what kind of sense of humor... I mean, we know what kind of sense of humor Mark has with regards to like his work on Space Quest, but if we're presenting this as a birthday present for him, yeah, I, I feel like giving him a piece... That's all about isolation and loneliness <laughs> for your birthday. <laughs> kind of sense the wrong message. And as and honestly, like uh, as a as an art piece that I would like have as a print framed, like as a as a like a you know in an art gallery like meaningful thing too definitely. But for a fun birthday present, I think three is definitely the way where we're gonna go or, or the way to go. So. Right. Well, that's yeah. that's a pretty unanimous uh, decision. <laughs> we didn't have to. Uh, uh, Daryl uh, was uh, suggesting we would have uh, the finale artists fight to the death. I would <laughs> love to see that. <laughs> uh, hey, trolls! Can I just say um, thank you for continuing to like just bring so many people in the venture community together. Um, You've really done a lot and dedicated a lot of time to doing that. Um, I, I really appreciate that coming as a you know Space Quest fan and getting to know you and getting like you know I, I started to meet other people through talking to you you know and I I probably wouldn't even have you know offered to help with Space Venture if it weren't for getting to know you first. Um, so, but th yeah, thank you for bringing so many people together. It's you're awesome, man. Oh shit! Uh, I you're just. Here. I yeah, just, I just I got that. Moist I always, somewhere. The third one. <laughs> I was like bringing up uh, the fact that I knew of trolls from way back when, in, like <laughs> reading the virtual broom closet and reading the extensive Space Quest FAQ that trolls wrote. And I was like, this guy really likes these games. That's really cool. I like these games too. That's great to know there's other people. And lo and behold, many years later, we actually communicate on a regular basis. So it's pretty cool that, you know, we can all come together and do this fun stuff based on these great things that we have enjoyed. <laughs> oh, we, uh, we, we keep, we keep coming back to this. Uh, shit. When I heard oh, the you. backseat, no, no shit. You hang up. No, we started the uh, backseat up. designers podcast and I was like, dude, dude, we should, we should like try and because, uh, you know, I've been listening to this blue cup tools podcast and it's like <laughs> really, really good. And these guys are so, uh, and, and of course we'll never be as good. Maybe they'll mention us someday. Wouldn't that be great? And this, all of a sudden, I get to call you weird names and you show up on my streams and shit. Thank you so much. And I get to pick you up and cradle you like a baby. Oh, he's done that twice. I saw <laughs> that. I, I saw that. that. It happened. I was there. How small are you, man? Who? Trolls is like six foot nine. No, 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 no. I don't know. I met Trolls in person. How, how tall are you to be able to pick him up? Oh, I'm five foot six. 
<laughs> I'm like an ant. Oh. I can lift many times. But well, also trolls may be six foot nine, but he probably weigh. How much do you weigh, trolls? You're like like nothing. Uh, yeah, so... I only know it in kilograms. It's like seventy or eighty kilograms or something. It's like nothing. But but still, that's some upper body strength, dude. Uh, also, the, the the dimensions are kind of wobbly and kind of. You hard just to have contend. to hold your arms out wide. It's oh, I, <laughs> let me not let me not go up too high on camera, lest my un, uh, unintentional branding show. I'm wearing a Twitch T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least it's not a YouTube t-shirt. Ooh! Uh, oh, we just dated Whoa. the stream, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Uh, I actually... Oh, shit. I wanted... <laughs> like, for my final... Like, because I'm going on a hiatus uh, from January and onwards, I thought my, like, my final video should just be that clip from my Adventure X documentary where my wife drunkenly says, YouTube is dead. Just on a loop for 10 hours. <laughs> That's my last video. 